All right, and welcome to lesson six. Uh, just a bit more on net force and acceleration. So here are our recently acquired formulas. It, it's the same formula, just one is solved for accelerations, one's for F net. Uh, here's our ones for force of gravity. This one, when you're solving for mass. And, and by the way, G, uh, sometimes it's it can be confusing. Sometimes um, I use the ex more exact 9.8. Uh, newtons per kilogram for how strong the acceleration due to gravity is. Uh, sometimes if we're just kind of doing quick mental math, it's going to be 10. So when you're doing your mops, and if you try 10, you get it wrong, try 9.8. Uh, I think you'll get a sense of when it's just a quick, easy question, they often do 10, or if they say approximately it's 10. In any case, let's take a look at this first part. It says, let's draw force diagrams for these two examples. Well, it seems to me for the first one, there's this car that is starting from rest and then speeding up, right? So it's a, it's it's a moving to the right and speeding up to the right. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about all the forces, but I know that the F net, the sum of all the forces is gonna to be to the right. So there'll be uh, the force of the motor. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna call that the applied force in this case, uh, will be to the right. There might be a small friction force to the left Of course, the force of gravity and the normal force. Uh, those two, since it's resting on a surface, are going to cancel each other out. But overall, the rightward force is going to be stronger than the leftward force. So the important thing is that there's an F net to the right. Now, looking at the second one here, yes, the object is moving to the right, but it's slowing down. Okay, so the F net in the second example would be equal to the left. Okay, so if I was to devise a, a reason, or the, all the forces, you know, here might be the force of gravity, here might be that normal force, and perhaps the, the, the driver has taken their foot off the gas and applied to the brakes, and then there's only some type of a friction to the left. But the important thing here is that on this question, F net is to the right, and on this one, F net is to the left. So, um, First of all, F net means the, the sum of all the forces. So here there are four, four different forces, and when we add them all together, we end up with a net force to the right. Now in both of these examples, the direction of F net, here F net is to the right, and uh, acceleration is equal to the right. Here F net is to the left, and acceleration is to the left. So really what we can do is point out is that the direction of the net force right, is equal to the direction of the acceleration. Those are always going to be the same. Um, and just a reminder, forces don't tell you which way, which way an object is moving. They tell you uh, which way it's accelerating. Uh, which way it is accelerating. And how do they tell you which way it's accelerating? Well, the sum of all the forces, the net force, whatever that that result is of adding them all together is going to be the direction of the acceleration. Okay, uh, I think I went over this once a little while ago um, on a couple of a couple videos ago, but it is coming up on your worksheet. This is that look, look out below guy, drops a fat cat with a weight of uh, 50 newtons. So um, let's see, to begin with, this cat is accelerating downwards. Don't worry, no actual cats were hurt in the uh, construction of this question. So there is accelerating downwards. If I was to draw a free body diagram of that cat, there's the cat, it's a box cat. It has a force of gravity, apparently, of 50 newtons. And so if I look at this, I would say F net is down. And that tells me that the acceleration is down. And look at this thing accelerating. You can see the dots getting farther apart. Uh, this is about the point at which it hits the water. I will, I will try to make some nice little water here. There's the water. And then it goes, uh, the free body diagram of while it's in the water, there is still that same force of gravity of 50 newtons but now it says here that there is a the water's pushing up at 50 newtons 
So this is the, uh, I'll call it the force of the water in this case, equals 50 newtons. So right now, F net equals zero, equals nothing. So we could say the acceleration is zero, or another way of saying that is constant velocity. So now I'm going to draw the dots at a nice, uh, evenly paced apart. Okay, so um, I can call this one part A, maybe in this one part B. So if we were to look at this, we'd say during part A, it's uh, accelerating downwards. During part B, it's at constant velocity. Now I should make this a bit more pretty. There, this is all wa underwater there. Whoosh, there we go. Okay, um, I think we turn to the next page here. Let's take a look at this practice. Practice number one says, determine the magnitude of the unknown forces. So re really, what is magnitude? Magnitude's gonna have like a number and a unit. So we basically we fill in the blanks. What's A and what's B? So it says that F net equals zero. If F net equals zero, that means that this force and this force, since they're the only vertical forces, they must be canceling each other out. So that I know that B is going to be equal to 200 newtons. And A and this 50 newtons must be canceling each other out. So this A must be 50 newtons to the left. All right, looking at C, the F net is equal to 900 newtons up. That means after these two are combined together, I have 900 newtons up. Another way of saying this is the up force in this question must be 900 more than the down force. So this must be 1100 newtons upwards. So for 1100 up and 200 down combined together would be 900 newtons up. How about this one? It says F net is 60 newtons to the left. Well, there's no F net is not, there's nothing up or downwards. So these two must cancel each other out. So this E is going to be equal to 300 newtons. Now the 80 and the D, the, the left must be 60 more than the right. So in this case, I know that D must be equal to 20 newtons. So that when they're combined together, you'll notice that we're not really following that pattern necessarily of saying a longer arrow to indicate a longer force, because that would kind of give things away. So, um, you know, I could fix this and say, oh, there we go. That one's, this one's bigger than that one. Okay, last one. F net is 30 newtons to the right. Okay, if the left is 20, and after I add the two together, I end up with 30 newtons to the right. The right one must be 30 larger than the left. So this will be 20 plus 30. This will be 50 newtons to the right. Now, I don't know what F or H are, but I know that they're equal. Okay, so I'll say F is uh, F and H are equal equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. And there really could be anything. We don't know. All right, what's left here? Oh, okay, here's another one. Fill in the blanks. All right, so uh, first of all, I'm looking at this and I see this first. If you see that the acceleration is equal to zero meters per second squared, we could get out the formula, but really uh, what's the use? Because six times zero is going to be equal to zero. So we know right away if, if we see a is equal to zero, then f net's got to be equal to zero. Or if you see the words constant velocity, you know f net's equal to zero. Another way, an another way of saying this, f net equals zero, is that the forces are balanced. We talked about balanced forces before, so really everything's going to cancel out. In this case, we have only two horizontal forces, so if it's friction's 15 newtons to the left, then the applied force must be 15 newtons to the right. Now, how are we going to figure out the force of gravity? Well, luckily, they gave us some information here. They told us that if that there is a mass of six kilograms, well, Fg, the force of gravity, 
is equal to the mass, in this case it's going to be 6, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. We're just going to use the 10 in this case, okay? We'll keep it easy. So it's going to be 6 times 10. So the force of gravity is going to be equal to 60 newtons. And here we go, 60 newtons, right in there. Again, if the forces are balanced, force of gravity downwards of 60 and the normal force up of 60, and it's all balanced there, we're done. We're coming up to the end here. Practice number three, um, we don't have to fill in the forces, but we have to fill in all these blanks on the bottom here. Okay, well, first of all, let's do that same thing we just, just did. We said Fg is equal to Mg. Now, in this question, they give us the force of gravity, and we would like to solve for mass. So if I rearrange this formula, I can say mass is equal to the force of gravity divided by g, and you've done this before, so it's going to be 8,000 newtons divided by 10, so it's going to be 800 kilograms. There we go. So we know that this is 800 kilograms. All right, now I'm looking at this and I say, I don't know acceleration yet because acceleration it depends on F net and on mass. And yes, I know mass, but I don't know acceleration. So of these three, I need to know at least two before I can find a third. Well, can I figure out F net? Sure I can. 8,000 up, 8,000 down. Those are going to cancel each other out. So I'm going to left, be left with 4,000 newtons to the left. So, over here, I'm going to say now I can figure out acceleration. Uh, let's rearrange this to solve for acceleration. A is equal to F net over M. So it's going to be equal to 8,000. Oh, sorry. I think it's 4,000, isn't it? 4,000 divided by 800. So I can cross off two zeros, cross off two zeros. 40 divided by 8 is 5. 5 meters per second squared and what's the direction well if this is left then I'll highlight it first and then I'll write it in then this is left same same all right um, so the worksheet is uh, there's two pages 13 and 14 and uh, mines on physics levels um, the this one is closely rated, related to sublevels 3, 8, and 9. If you've already done sublevel 3, that's fine. I'm, it's just a, uh, it relates this particular lesson to those sublevels. All right, thanks, and we'll see you in class.